Oh, we thank you for this day you have made, O oh God. We declare we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Be magnified, Father God. Be glorified, O oh King. Be exalted, our Father. Oh, we glorify your name, our King. We glorify your name, our Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, our Father. Oh, you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You deserve all the glory, Lord. You deserve all the honor, our Father. There is no one like you, Lord. We just bless your name, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your steadfast love that never sees it. Thank you for your mercies that never come to an end. They are new every morning, our King and our God. Thank you for your strength upon us. Thank you for your grace upon us. Thank you for your favor upon us, Almighty God. Thank you because you are looking down upon us in mercy, uh, not in judgment. And we thank you for that, O oh God. And we give you the glory, our Father. Thank you, O oh God, because it's truly not by might nor by our power, but by your spirit, almighty God. We thank you for everything that you are to us and all that you mean to us. We give you all the praise, our Father. We give you all the glory. We commit this session into your hands and we pray, almighty God, take absolute control. Let's commit this session to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to take absolute control even at this time. Almighty God, we ask that you take absolute control there, Holy Spirit, that you speak through us, that you speak, lead us in the place of prayer even today. We ask that you lead us in every step of the way, that you will empower us by your spirit. Oh, we ask that you lead us in every way, Lord. Be magnified, our Father. Be glorified, our King. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, our Father. Oh, we magnify your name. Your name is higher than every other. Oh, yes, Lord, your name is higher than every other. And we declare, Father God, your name is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion and the sides of the north, the city of the great king. We have come unto you, our God. We have come before you with boldly. The Bible says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Let's declare we are coming boldly Ah, that we may obtain mercy. Ah, yes, Lord, we are coming boldly. Ah, we are coming boldly, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, we're coming boldly on the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Let's declare we're going to obtain mercy today. Ah, we're obtaining mercy today from your presence, Lord. We thank you. Ah, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We're obtaining mercy, Lord. Ah, we're obtaining mercy. We come boldly. We come boldly before you today. We come boldly before you this day, Lord. We come boldly and we ask, oh God, enable us, oh God, in this place of prayer. Embolden us in this place of prayer. Direct us by your spirit in this place of prayer. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we pray and declare, oh God, be magnified. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the praise, our Father. We give you all the glory, our King. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. We're going to continue our prayers. And we're just so grateful to God for the honor to be able to come before him, to just seek his face and to call upon him earnestly in the place of prayer. Today, we're going to continue on day three. And we're just going to uh, look at um, the focus of the prayer for today, which is the day of repentance. Remember, we're going on the 21 day time of prayer avalanche, just praying to the Lord and crying unto on, on God because our prayer matters. I will start by reading the quote of the day here uh, in our book here. Uh, and the, the, the quote for the day is, prayer is where the action is, quoted by John Wesley. Prayer is where the action is. These are revivalists, these are reformers who God used mightily. And if for every day, we're going to have a prayer quote just to underscore the importance and potency of prayer. And I cannot emphasize the value and the power of prayer enough. The Old Testament saints that were outstanding were men and women of prayer. The New Testament saints that were outstanding were men and women of prayer. Our Lord Jesus himself was a man given to prayer. The Bible would say in different uh, occasions where Jesus woke up early in the morning, went aside to the mountain and prayed. The Bible will tell us he went up to the mountain and spent all night in the place of prayer. And then the next day he chose his 12, 12 disciples. The Bible will tell us that he went to the garden of Gethsemane and prayed through before he went to the cross. So many occasions where we see Jesus praying. And of course, when Jesus went to heaven, and his disciples uh, were handed over the, the ministry and the brethren of the church, the Bible makes us understand that they were actually in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. And what were they doing in the, in the upper room in the, on the day of Pentecost? They were praying. And while they were praying, the power fell. 
Prayer underscores the life of a believer. It's like oxygen. It is so essential to the Christian that there's no way we can overemphasize the value and the importance of prayer. So I want to thank God for you. Thank God for everyone that has been able to sacrifice the time to come. I know that our schedules are different. Sometimes our days are available, we're available easily, but sometimes it will take a lot of sacrifice for you to just create this time to come. And I honor God for you to, to be able to create this time. And God sees your heart. And as you have taken our time to honor God, God, in this hour of prayer, I pray God will honor you and God will answer your prayer also. So we're going to continue. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles um, chapter 7, verse 14. I want Jasmine to kindly read uh, verse 14 of 2 Chronicles chapter 7. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This scripture is very clear. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. That's the opening of that verse 14. If my people who are called by my name. God is saying it's not everybody that is regarded as the people of God. It's clear because you could have just said if anybody prayed. No, the Bible is clear here. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. I want you to notice that the criteria for intercession to be able to qualify to be heard from, from by, by God is that you must be a member of God's family. You must be a person of God. I say, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. Can you see the value of humility? That prayer must start with a heart of humility. You cannot enter the place of prayer with an attitude of arrogance, with an attitude of pride, with an air of importance. You must come in in a humble manner. For you to get any audience before the king of kings, you cannot bring about, uh, you can't bring in your, your stuff, your, 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 your personal achievements and things before God. If you truly want to cry out to God, you truly want to get audience from the king, then God says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. That means if the people are not God's people and they humble themselves and pray they are wasting their time because they've missed their, their identity is, is missing already it tells us about the sons of skiva the sons of skiva were not yet the people of god they had not yet accepted jesus jesus as, lord, as their lord and savior and they went ahead to start to uh, to cast out a devil from a person and the devil beat them up why because they were not god's people so you must satisfy your citizenship with heaven so if, if once you have satisfied the, uh, satisfy your citizenship with heaven it's not even automatic you now have to go with the heart of humility say if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Can we declare today that as his people, we're going to come with a heart of humility. I want you to pray that even as we continue in prayer, that you will approach this prayer session with a heart of humility. You're not going to come with an air of arrogance. I will not come with an air of arrogance or self-importance. I'm going to approach this prayer assignment with a sense of humility, understanding that it is a privilege to pray and not a right. Understanding that God can raise anybody. God could have raised the donkey. God could have raised stones in our place, but we are honored to be called the people of God. We are honored to be numbered among the saints and we are privileged and we do not take this lightly and therefore we approach him with humility. Can we pray even as we come before you, Lord, we come with a heart of humility. We, your people, who are called by your name, Father, we humble ourselves today and we come in this place of prayer with a heart of humility. Let's declare, Lord, we approach your presence with a heart of humility. Father, we do not come with the assumption that everything is is, uh, we have a right to it. Father, we come with a heart of humility, almighty God. We approach your presence with a heart of humility, our King and our God. Even as we come today, Lord, we come with a heart of humility before your throne. We come with that sense, oh God, of understanding that without you, we can do nothing. Therefore, we ask almighty God, hear our cry, hear our prayer. As we come to you, Father God, we declare we come with a heart of humility before our King and our God. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. That means when you humble yourselves, what are you doing? Sometimes you can humble yourself and fall asleep. Humble yourself and just do nothing else. But he's saying humble ourselves and pray. Occupy ourselves in prayer and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I want us to see the three promises God made. 
and the things that we need to do for God to do this. And we're doing this on behalf of Nigeria. Remember, we're taking out this first, uh, this, uh, this prayer sessions that we're doing, these 21 days, to pray for Nigeria. And for everyone who has a heart for Nigeria, we encourage you to continue in prayer for Nigeria because we sense in our spirit, God is up to something. And we're going to look at the, the, the very important prophetic word God has given us as we continue in these prayer sessions. We're going to come up across those words God has given us specifically. The first one we have come across was the fact that God has given uh, identified for us five kinds of Nigerians. We have the watchmen, those who are responsible to stand in the, upon their watch, stand in the place of prayer, men, women, everywhere around the world praying for Nigeria. Those are the watchmen. Then we have the warriors. Those are reformers. Those who ought to put their hands to the plow and do something about the situation in Nigeria. Those are the warriors. Then we have the wise ones. The wise ones are those who God has graced with wisdom and, and understanding to be outstanding like Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are meant to be giving counsel to our leaders and also who are supposed to be leaders in their own right, but operating with the wisdom of God and not with the wisdom of the world. Then we have the wasters. The wasters are the problem of Nigeria. The wasters are those who are there contrary to the the well-being of the majority and the wasters have to be silenced but the rest have to rise up in their strength or else the wasters will continue to waste Nigeria. The fifth group are the worried ones. The worried ones are those who are suffering the brunt of any challenge Nigeria is facing today. Those who are facing the brunt of it, those who are considered that are downcast and they don't know the way out. Those are the worried ones and God has told us how to handle every situation so that we can pick the worried ones and pick everybody up so that we can become what God wants us to become. And now as we continue, today we're dedicating as a day of repentance. That's the topic for today, the day of repentance. We're looking at repentance in a deeper way. We started a bit yesterday, but we're taking it further today. And we have seen God making this promise in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if we do all that we have to do as God's people, if we come and seek his face, we humble ourselves, we seek his face, and then we turn from our wicked ways. And I want you to notice, God says if we seek his face, not his hands, Seeking God's face and seeking God's hands is not the same. When you are seeking the hand of God, you are seeking for miracles. You are seeking for a blessing. When you are seeking his face, you are seeking a relationship with him. You are seeking an intimacy with him. Seeking his face is more important to God than seeking his hands. His hands is always going to be doing what his face wants him to do. But sometimes we come to God with a hidden agenda of what he has in his hands to give us. And when you come like that, you're only going to get the blessing, but you're not going to get a permanent solution. And that is what we need to remember. We are here to seek his face and not his hand. That's why an intercessor has to be selfless. An intercessor has to understand when you are approaching the presence of God, you are approaching it because you are seeking the hand, uh, the, the face of God and not his hand. And the Bible says in Psalms 27, when thou said, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, O God, will I seek. I want us to lift our voice and declare today that, Father, even as we have humbled ourselves, even as we engage in prayer, we declare we are here to seek your face. Can you go ahead and tell the Lord? Father, we're here to seek your face, Lord. We're here to seek your face. The Bible made it clear what to seek for. It says when we come uh, in humility and we come in the place of prayer, we should seek his face. Father, we come. And we seek your face today. Can we declare concerning Nigeria, Lord, we seek your face. Uh, concerning leadership in Nigeria, Lord, we seek your face. Concerning the transformation of Nigeria, Father, we seek your face. Concerning the situation in Nigeria right now, Father, we seek your face. Uh, we know, Father God, as we seek your face, we will have audience with the King of Kings. Audience with the Almighty, audience with the creator of the ends of the earth. We come seeking your face in this place of prayer. We turn from our wicked ways, Almighty God, and we and we seek your face, our Father. And we know your hands are powerful, your hands are awesome, but we understand that in the place of intercession, we need to seek your face. So, Father, we come seeking your face, and we thank you for your promises that as we do these things, if we follow the right order and we approach your presence correctly, this is what you have promised. You said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Let's lift our voice and declare, Father, hear from heaven. Lord, forgive our sin and Lord, heal our land. Can we pray these three simple prayers to the Lord concerning Nigeria? Almighty God, hear from heaven concerning Nigeria. Hear favorably concerning Nigeria, Almighty God. Father God, forgive every sin of Nigeria. Father, forgive every way that we have failed you as a people. Father, forgive our sin. And number three, Lord, heal our land. Oh God, heal our land. Can anybody and everybody cry out as an intercessor? Lord, hear from heaven concerning Nigeria as we join our hearts all over the world, praying, Almighty God. We declare, Almighty God, hear from heaven. 
Forgive our sin. Heal our land, Lord. Almighty God, hear from heaven. Hear from heaven. Let your ears not to not be deaf from our cries, O God. Let your hands not be too short to answer us, Almighty God. Let your face not be turned away from us, Almighty God, because you said your ears are not deaf, neither are your hands short to save us, but your sin and your iniquity has kept God from you, has made it look as if God is not hearing you, because there is something blocking between you and God. But we thank you, our God, because today we cry out with a heart of humility, and we seek your face, and we pray, Almighty God, hear from heaven concerning Nigeria. Forgive our sin and heal our land. I want you to notice the other. Before we talk about healing the land, there has to be the hearing and the forgiving. You cannot deal with the healing. You can't jump straight for healing when you have not dealt with the forgiveness issue. You have not dealt with the issue of what is what, what, what went wrong. You can't just jump and assume all business as usual. That's why it, went, it follows this order. Hear from heaven forgive our sin and heal our land. He didn't say heal our land, then forgive our sins. He says, forgive our sins and they'll heal our land. Let's pray that we'll begin to take responsibility in our area of responsibility concerning the situation in Nigeria, that we're not going to be pointing fingers. We're not accusers of the brethren. We're going to take responsibility. Let's go ahead and declare that we'll come before God in genuine repentance. Let's pray that we're going to approach God in this season with genuine heart of repentance, with a desire for the well-being and the welfare of Nigeria, that will approach God's presence and desire that rather than judgment, we will receive mercy. You see, when people operate in sin, what is expected is judgment. What is expected is for them to be scattered and discombobulated. But what happens is when intercessors step into the picture, rather than judgment, God releases mercy. Can we ask for mercy? Cry out for mercy. Father, we call out for mercy. Father, we cry out for mercy today. Father, we seek your face and we call, cry out for mercy. Almighty God, we cry out for mercy. Almighty God, we cry out for mercy this day. Almighty God, have mercy upon Nigeria. Have mercy upon all aspects of Nigeria. Have mercy upon our men. Have mercy upon our women. Have mercy upon our youths. Have mercy upon our teachers. Have mercy upon our medical staff. Have mercy, O oh God, upon our educators. Have mercy upon our politicians. Have mercy upon our serving personnel. Have mercy upon the civil service. Have mercy upon the public servants. Have mercy upon Nigeria. Have mercy upon the public sector. Have mercy upon the private sector. Have mercy in all areas. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Almighty God, have mercy upon Nigeria. Have mercy. We plead for mercy. Oh God, we cry out for your mercy concerning Nigeria, Almighty God, as we seek your face. Oh God, we cry out for mercy. We say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh God, in your anger, remember mercy so that your anger can be turned away from us, oh God. Remember mercy. Remember mercy. In your wrath, remember mercy. Oh God, remember mercy. Ah, we approach mercy. We seek your face and we ask for mercy, Lord. Ah, stretch out the scepter towards us, oh God. Stretch out the scepter of mercy towards us, we pray. Ah, Father, raise intercessors that will seek you in genuine repentance. Let's pray that as people are praying concerning Nigeria, that God will help us uh, to come before him with the genuine heart of repentance. Uh, we're not going to be approaching God with a sense of entitlement. Uh, ah, this sense of being God's own country, God's own people, nothing can happen, nothing spoil. That attitude that comes from an arrogance that is not from God. I would rather we come to God with a heart of humility and saying, Father, looking at Nigeria, it is only by your mercy that we are still one. It's only by your mercy that we're going to be what you want us to become. It's only by your mercy that we're going to be delivered from the pit and from all the challenges we face. Father, it is only by your mercy. It it is only by your mercy. And that's why even as we approach your presence, uh, we remove pride from us. Uh, we remove every form of arrogance from us. Uh, we approach you, O oh God, with a sense of humility concerning Nigeria. And we say, Father, have mercy upon Nigeria. Father God, we cry out to you. Uh, just like Nehemiah cried out, Lord, we cry out to you for mercy. We cry out for you to, to you for mercy. And we ask Almighty God, Almighty God, we seek your face. And we say, Father, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon your people, Nigeria. Have mercy upon us wherever we are. Have mercy upon us in this hour. Have mercy upon us in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to now turn to Zechariah chapter 3. 
there's something very important I want us to look at from Zechariah. Uh, during the time of the captivity of the children of Israel in Judah, they had uh, gotten to a point where the children of Israel were ordered to go and rebuild the city, rebuild the temple, rebuild the world, but they had opposition everywhere. Though God's voice and God's prophecy was with them, God's prophecy being upon your life does not resist and does not stop you from being opposed. Just because you have the word of God or a promise from God doesn't mean the enemy will not resist you. In fact, the moment you receive a promise from God, it is when the enemy wants to attack you. When God told Adam and Eve after he created them and said, everything is all, is, is all right, they can do whatever, they can have fun, but they cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they can eat any other thing in the garden. And he gave them authority to tend the garden and he blessed them and made them and replenish the earth and all that wonderful promise. Guess what? Chapter 3, Satan shows up and attacks them in the area of their prophecy, in the area of their promise. Jesus goes to the Jordan and is baptized by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist tell, uh, baptized and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And then a dove, uh, the Holy Spirit descends in the form of a dove upon Jesus. And the Father speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, after that wonderful experience in Jordan, guess what happens? Jesus is led into the wilderness. And when Satan comes to tempt Jesus, the first temptation was in line with the sonship his father had just declared from heaven. He says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be turned to bread. That's what God just said at, at, the, at the Jordan. Yet that's where the devil attacks. Anytime a, a people have a prophecy from God, they will be attacked by the adversary. That is why any unique challenge Nigeria is facing today, the opposite is the picture of where God wants us to go. So let us not assume it's just like that. It's just coincidence. No, it is a sign that is a heavy prophecy over Nigeria. And Satan and his cohorts are doing everything to keep us down. But we declare you cannot keep a good man down. You cannot keep a God's nation down. You cannot keep the people of God down. The devil will not keep us down. Go ahead and declare nothing and no one will keep. Before we go into the Zechariah scripture, can we declare no one can keep us down? The Bible says you cannot keep a good man down. It says rejoice not, all my enemies, when I fall, for I shall arise. Oh, yes, when I sit in darkness, for the Lord shall be a light unto me. Can we declare Nigeria is rising? You can't keep a good a good nation down. You can't keep God's people down. Let's declare no circumstance will keep us down. Let's declare no one and nothing. There's no power of hell that can keep Nigeria down. Nigeria is shaking herself from the dust and coming into our prophecy. Even in this season, we don't care how bad it looks. We don't care how horrible it looks. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, in our God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We declare even in this hour that no one can keep us down. Go ahead and declare no one can keep us down. Nigeria is right and no force of hell, no, uh, no, no conspiracy of hell will keep us down. Even in this season, we declare we are rising in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want us to start by uh, Zechariah, by asking Jasmine to kindly read Zechariah chapter 1. Start from verse 1 to 3. Chapter, no, Zechariah chapter 3, sorry. Verse 1 to 3. The New Living Translation will be preferred if we have it. Okay. Zechariah 3 from verse 1. Then the angel showed me Jeshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser, Satan, was there at the angel's right hand, making accusations against Jeshua. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusation, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. I want us to realize that this is a very serious prophetic experience that Zechariah the prophet had and it was a revelation of the high priest first and foremost the high priest was in the temple and that's what the high priest supposed to be the high priest supposed to be in the temple representing the people so the high priest Joshua was not there in his own right so that person is talking to even though the, the, the word is being addressed to Joshua it is the state of the nation so Joshua standing there in filthy garments is a picture of the nation of Israel at that time being in a filthy state and unqualified to stand before God. And the Bible says something awkward. First and foremost, the high priest was dressed in filthy garments. That is so out of place. The high priest is not meant to be in a filthy garment. Your, your, the garment ought to be white. The garment ought to be uh, spotless. 
having a filthy garment in the presence of God is an abnormality. Something was wrong. And then another abnormality, the Bible says, and Joshua was standing in front of the angel of the Lord. The Joshua is supposed to stand in front of the Lord, not the angel of the Lord. So one, he was in a filthy garment. Number two, he was standing in front of the angel of God. To make matters even worse, to complicate it matters further, the Bible says, and Satan was his right-hand man. Satan was standing by, what is Satan doing in the temple, standing by the right hand of the high priest, is because Satan had a strong case against Joshua and against the nation. When the people of God go off the will of God, then they don't stand right before God, and then they give the enemy license to stand by their right side. It even stand on his left side, stand by his right side, and the Bible says to accuse him or to resist him. Whatever is disqualifying Nigeria, from having a right standing with God. Father, we ask for your mercy. Can we lift our voice and declare? There was something that disqualified the high priest from standing before God. If you know how old the Old Testament is and how strict God is with the, with the high priest, if the high priest enters the presence of God without the right garment, without the right prescription of sprinkling of the blood and the sacrifice, that high priest is normally struck dead by the glory of God. So for Joshua to still be breathing, it is a mercy of God. So somehow, some way, Nigeria is still striving. Nigeria is still standing. In spite of all that she has gone through, it is a mercy of God. Can we go ahead and say, Father, whatever is disqualifying us from standing right in your presence for us to stand have a right standing with god we remove those things that disqualify us something disqualified joshua something the bible didn't tell us the details of what particular filthiness it was but the bible says and i saw joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the lord in filthy garments and satan standing by his right hand to resist him something was wrong with this picture this is not how we saw aaron this is not how we see the other high priest something is wrong with this picture Picture. And when I look at Nigeria in the spirit, uh, what I have to tell you is that there's something wrong with this picture, and I'm not going to accept it. Uh, because even in this context, uh, the prophet did not accept it. Uh, God did not accept the situation. Let us not accept what is happening in Nigeria as if it is final. No, it is not the final. Because even Joshua, though he was standing in filthy garments, he still had breath in his nostrils. Somehow, some way, by the mercies of God, Joshua was still standing. Almighty God, we pray, Father God, for your mercy. And we declare, Almighty God, that you will take away everything that disqualifies us, everything that has made us to come before you in filthy garments. When a high priest is in filthy garments, his prayer will not be heard, his, 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 his plea will not be responded to because he's not dressed right. He's not dressed right in the spirit. So, Father, change our garment. Take away the filthy garment, oh God. Father, we pray, take away the filthy garment. And we declare, we will not give occasion to the to the accuser of the bread. And some Something gave confidence to the accuser to stand by, by the right hand side of the high priest. Something gave him confidence. Let's remove that confidence of the enemy. Let's remove every confidence of her. Whatever is giving the enemy confidence uh, to do what, what he's doing against Nigeria, let's remove that source of confidence. We remove that source of confidence. Whatever I gave Satan, the, the, the confidence to stand by the right hand of the high priest in the temple of God, not even outside the temple, tells you there was strong case of accusation. But we thank God for his mercy because the high priest was still standing. Father, we thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can type an amen also. Uh, and the Bible says something. Do you know Joshua did not say a word? Joshua is, cannot be quiet. If you're a high priest and the presence of God, you're supposed to be repenting, saying something about the sin of the nation, calling out to God for mercy and grace. This guy was mute. He was quiet. Something has silenced him. When the enemy, when the enemy has a strong case against you and you are standing before God, normally you become mute. You become deaf and dumb. You become quiet because you don't want to say anything before they expose you. So the high priest did not say anything. And a dumb or a quiet high, high priest, a dangerous high, a high priest that cannot talk, an intercessor that will not pray and articulate himself is, is as good as nothing. You have to be a praying intercessor. You have to be a high priest that can speak in the presence of God. When something takes away your confidence to talk before God, then it's a big problem. And the Bible says, and the high priest said nothing. But then this is what happened. In that same verse 2, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Satan. Can you see? It was the Lord that spoke. The Lord spoke on behalf of Joshua in his filthy garment. And the Lord rebuked. He said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plugged out of the fire? The Lord stepped in and he rebuked Satan where the, where the high priest could not speak. God spoke for him. Lift your voice and pray. 
Almighty God, speak for Nigeria. Almighty God, declare your glory over Nigeria. Almighty God, we want to hear your word over Nigeria. Father, where we have become mute, where we really have lost our confidence to speak, Father, we thank you because you will speak for us. God, we declare the blood of Christ will speak for us. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Can we go ahead and declare, Lord, speak on our behalf. Lord, speak for us. Uh, Almighty, God, Almighty God, speak for us. Uh, Almighty God, speak for us. The Lord spoke and rebuked the enemy. And he said, is this not a brand plugged out of the fire? He's saying, somehow, some way, I have redeemed this once, even though it's through fire, I have redeemed them. Father, we thank you because no matter how fiery the challenges of Nigeria has been, Father, we thank you because we are plugged out of the fire. Nigeria is plugged out of the fire. We thank you because you are speaking on our behalf. Let's thank God because the blood of Jesus is speaking on our behalf right now. Father, we thank Thank you because the blood of the lamb is speaking on our behalf right now we bless your name because the blood is speaking oh yes we thank you our father the blood is speaking on our behalf right now. We give you the glory, our Father. We give you the honor because the blood is speaking. God, we thank the Lord because the blood is speaking on our behalf. The voice of the Lord is speaking on our behalf. We're grateful to you because you are speaking on our behalf. Where we cannot speak, where we don't really have confidence in the spirit. Father, we know, almighty God, your voice is speaking on our behalf. And your blood is speaking on our behalf, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, our Father. We give you the praise for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want Jasmine to continue Zechariah chapter 3 from verse 4 to the end. Just a few verses. Just from verse 4. Continue to the end, please. So the angel said to the others standing there, Take off his filthy clothes. And turning to Jeshua, he said, See, I have taken away your sins, and now I am giving you these fine new clothes. Then I said, They should also place a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean priestly turban on his head and dressed him in new clothes, while the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord spoke very solemnly to Jeshua, and said, This is what the Lord of heaven Almighty says. If you follow my ways and carefully serve me, then you will be given authority over my temple and its courtyards. I will let you walk among these others standing here. Listen to me, O Jeshua the high priest, and all you other priests. You are symbols of things to come. Soon I am going to bring my servant, the branch. Now look at the jewel I have set before Jeshua, a single stone with seven facets. I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. And I will remove the sins of this land in a single day. And on that day, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, each of you will invite your neighbor to sit with you peacefully under your own grapevine and fig tree. Thank you so much, Jasmine. The Bible says something awesome happened. Joshua didn't have to leave the temple or get struck down by the glory of God. God operated in his mercy and grace, and he ordered the angel to change Joshua's garment. Say, take away his filthy garment, and they gave him clean garments, and they dressed him in the proper garment, and even put a fear meter over, a mitre over his head, like a turban, like a mark of authority. They, God literally changed his identity in the spirit so that he could qualify to represent the nation. And what he was doing is a prophetic picture of what God is doing for Nigeria. And I'm, I'm saying this because these prayer seasons are prophetic. So just pay, pay attention in the spirit because as the Lord is speaking through us, we're going to just declare it. What I sense the Lord is doing is that remember Lazarus, God is taking away the grave clothes from around Nigeria and is changing our garments. Can we go ahead and thank the Lord for what he just revealed to us by his spirit? Lord, we thank you because you are remo removing the grave clothes over Nigeria. Something has put us under the sentence of death has put us under the sentence of disdain and dismay and, and dis depression. But God says, I'm taking away that filthy garment. I'm taking away your grave clothes and I'm giving you a change of garment. As a nation in the spirit, God is changing our garment. Can we go ahead and declare it? Father, we thank you for what you are doing in the spirit. We identify and we locate in the spirit that almighty God, you are removing every grave clothes. You are removing every grave clothes, grave clothes from over Nigeria. And almighty God, you are changing our garments. And we are grateful to you Father, and we bless your name and we thank you, Father God, because you are taking away the grave clothes, oh God, from all aspects of Nigeria, from the men, from the women, from the children, from the families, from the homes, from the businesses, almighty God, from the schools, you are taking away the grave clothes, you are taking away every filthy garment, uh, and Father, you are giving us a change of clothes, and you are giving us back our turban, and you are giving us the crown, you are putting everything on us, you are changing our garments, uh, and we thank you, almighty God, and we bless you, 
our father because they are changing our garment. Uh, Almighty God, we thank you because you said you're going to give us charge. We're going to be in charge again. You're going to put us to be in charge again. He told Joshua, I'm going to make sure you are in charge. Do you know I'm going to give you command? I'm going to give you charge. And that uh, you also judge my house uh, and you will be, take charge of my courts. Uh, and I will give you places to walk among those who stand. You're going to stand in the community of nations. Uh, you're going to stand among the greats in the world. Uh, I'm going to raise you up. Uh, yes, you came before me with filthy garments, but by my mercy, I'm changing your garment. In this season, Nigeria, God is changing our garment. God is changing our garment. God is changing our garment. He's taking the garment of heaviness and he's giving us a garment of joy. He's taking away the spirit of mourning and he's giving us a spirit of lifting and, and healing. Almighty God, we thank you, Almighty God. You are taking away the grave clothes from us and you are changing our garments and we give you the glory for that, Almighty God. We thank you because we and everyone connected with Nigeria, whether they are Nigerians or not, so long as they have the interest of Nigeria, we thank you because we will be people that are meant for signs and wonders. Let's declare Nigeria is meant for signs and wonders. Nigerians are meant for signs and wonders. Everyone connected with Nigeria is meant for signs and wonders. And we declare we are people wondered at in a good way. We are people wondered at. That's what he said in Zechariah. We are people wondered at. We declare, Father, we give you praise as we see, oh God, the grave clothes being removed. We see the identity of Nigeria in the spirit being changed. And we see it manifest in the physical. To this end, we give you the glory. Almighty God, the stigma and stigmatization is being rolled out. And Father, honor and glory is coming. The garment of honor and the garment of glory is coming. The garment of stigma and stigmatization is out. Ah, the garment of honor and glory is coming on. And we give you the glory as we see it in the spirit. And the Bible says here very powerfully, and I will remove the iniquity of the land in one day. <laughs> and I will remove the iniquity of the land, not in 10 years, not in 500 years, but in one day, in one moment, God will do a quick walk. Lift your voice and begin to declare, Father, do a great walk. Do a quick walk. You said in one day, you remove the iniquity of the land. In one day, Almighty God, do a quick walk. God is a God that does quick walk. God does great work. Does, God does quick walk. Almighty God, do great work. Do your quick work in Nigeria. Do your quick work. People are expecting things to change maybe 10 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, maybe not our time. Maybe another generation in the future will see the change. No, 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 no. God can do it. And God is saying, I'm going to remove the iniquity of the land in one day. Oh, yes, Lord. You are the one that can do it in one day. That's why the role of the prophetic is very key. Because even as you pray, God leads us by the spirit of prophecy. And it tells us specific things he's doing concerning Nigeria and what God is doing right now in today's session is telling us I'm removing the grave clothes from off Nigeria. I'm removing every garment of st stigma and stigmatization. I'm giving you the garment of praise, garment of honor, garment, garment of dignity. Oh yes, sir. thank you, Father, because you are removing iniquity from us. And I want you to notice something in the last verse of Zechariah. The last verse of Zechariah chapter 3 is very important. Verse 10 says, in that day, says the Lord, that which day? The same day in which he's removing the iniquity in one day, that same day, he says, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. I want to read it from the message translation. The message translation says this, and it's very important because it's telling us something important, very critical. At that time, Everyone will get along with one another. Listen to this word. This is God's prophetic word. At that time, everyone will get along with one another with friendly visits across the fence, friendly visits on one another's porches. That means any form of enmity, any form of bloodshed, anything that is causing, destabilizing Nigeria, bringing sentiment against maybe religious sentiments or ethnic sentiment, whatever ground the enemy is using to bring division amongst us. God says, I'm going to make sure that everyone gets along with his neighbor. What is God saying? I'm bringing peace. I'm bringing brotherly love back to Nigeria where there will be love and trust in every way. God is removing the walls of division, the walls of violence, the walls of kidnapping, terrorism, all those nonsense. He's removing it in one day. Go ahead and thank the Lord because the walls are coming down. Can we go ahead and thank the Lord because the walls are coming down? Father, we thank you because the walls are coming down. We give you the praise, our Father, because the walls are coming down. We give you the glory, oh God. We give you all honor because the walls are coming down. Can we thank the Lord because the walls of division, 
the walls of separation are coming down. Let's thank him because the walls are coming down. Let's thank God. I sense it in my heart. The walls are coming down. Whatever it is, it could be political opponents, uh, it could be ethnic grounds, it could be a religious ground, whatever excuses the enemy is using to put has, to have put walls between Nigerians. God says, I'm putting down those walls because the neighbor will look after their neighbor and they will visit one another. There will be no more fences in terms of fences of division, fences, uh, seed of discord, and everything that is causing any kind of disaffection. God says, I'm, rem I'm removing those walls. Uh, Father, we thank you because we are cutting down those walls. You are put we are pulling down those walls. Uh, ah, there is unity amongst us. Uh, let there be love shed amongst us. Uh, let there be love in our hearts. Uh, and let this love sweep the nation. Almighty God, uh, that's what we declare even in this hour. We arise, oh God, and we shine because our light has come. And we declare indeed uh, God's glory is, is sweeping through the land of Nigeria. God is bringing peace in our land. Uh, God is pulling down the walls of separation, the walls of disunity, and every form of this the, 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 uh, misunderstanding. God is pulling down those walls. And we thank you, our Father. And we give you all the praise, our King, for bringing down the walls. We give you the honor, Almighty God, because the grave clothes, clothes are coming off. Uh, and the glory clothes are coming on. And we thank you because the walls of division are coming down right now. Those who are sowing seed of, of discord, whether they are local or foreign or domestic, we eliminate them. Those voice, we silence those voice of division, uh, those voice that seek to divide and not unite, uh, we silence them today. Let's go ahead and begin to silence every voice uh, speaking division in Nigeria, speaking confusion in Nigeria, speaking pain in Nigeria, speaking death, uh, speaking attacks, speaking fights. Uh, let's go ahead and silence the voices of division against Nigeria in the spirit and in the physical. Silence every voice. You have the authority in the name of Jesus to silence the voice of division to find the, the voice of the uh, disunity. Go ahead and silence those voices. Uh. We silence every voice of division, uh, every voice of disunity. We silence it in the name of Jesus. We silence every voice. Uh. Oh, yes. Uh, we silence every voice uh, of disunity against Nigeria. We silence every voice. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word that is mighty, for your word that is potent, for your word that is powerful, for your word that is quick. And we give you all the glory, our Father. Oh, Malema Satele, Babore Baba Satari, Babore Baba Saturia. Ah, Bare Babore Baba Satari, Babore Baba Saturiba. Ah, Mare Baba Satara. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I want us to turn to Daniel in our Bibles. Let's turn to Daniel, New Living Translation. I want us to look at the, the pattern, Daniel, full. I mentioned it, but we have not really read the scripture. So I want us to read Daniel chapter 9. We're going to do verse 9 to 19, but we're not going to read the whole verse 9, uh, to 19 immediately. We're going to start with a few verses and then we carry on like that. So let's go to Daniel chapter 9. And I just want you to read verse 1 to 3, Jasmine. It was the first year of the reign of Darius, the, the, Med the son of Ahas Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord, as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet, that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. I want us to notice something about this very favored man called Daniel. Daniel is highly favored. If you have ever known anything about Daniel, Daniel was one of the most favored men by heaven. God really favored Daniel. The Bible tells us something unique here. In the beginning of Daniel, when there was the, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he threatened to kill all the rich men and the wise men of Babylon, the Bible says Daniel went and called Shedda, Misha, and Abednego, and they prayed together. What is unique about this Daniel 9 is that this prayer that we're reading today about Daniel, he didn't call for his prayer partners. Daniel acted alone in this case. I don't know why, and this is not explained, but in this case, Daniel on his own went into the season of intercession for his entire nation and God honored it. What I want to ask you is this. Is it possible if in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, one man called Daniel can pray for mercy on behalf of his entire nation without any prayer partner and God will honor it? Is it in the New Testament when we're even more than one person? If we come together and pray, don't you think God will honor us? Don't you think God will honor our prayer? And remember, we're in, a New Testament, we're in the New Testament, we're, which is established under a better covenant. And the Bible says Daniel didn't just pray. Now, I want you to notice that prayer, Daniel didn't pray this prayer at the beginning of the captivity. There is a timing to intercession. There is the right time to repent, a right time to see a revival, because the process of judgment has to go through a cycle. He says 70 years was determined for that land to be in captivity in Judah. 
before they could return to land to back to the to Israel. And it was only towards the, the this was like the 67th year, three years before the end of the captivity schedule, that Daniel began to pray. So Daniel said, I understood this prophecy in by Jeremiah. He says, I'm I, I'm an intelligent that says I didn't just come and say God delivers, delivers a, a, a first year of the of of of, sli, of, of bondage in Babylon. It, the timing was right. The intercessor was right. So everything was falling into place, but he diligently changed his garment, went to the place of prayer, humbled himself in fasting and prayer. Man, this was serious matter. Daniel wasn't playing here, and he's telling you what he did. And if you want to learn from Daniel and apply those principles for Nigeria, we have to follow that pattern. There are many prophecies over Nigeria that has come that, that are coming to fusion in this season. I sense it in my heart that we are coming to that, we have come to that time where the manifestation of the glory God has promised Nigeria has come. But we as a people of God, we cannot just sit down and assume it will happen. It doesn't happen automatically. We have to take responsibility in prayer. And just like Daniel, let's declare, Father, just like Daniel, we are going to come before you with intelligent intercession. Can we lift our voice and pray? Daniel did not pray amiss. Daniel did not pray emotional prayer. Hey, Father, oh, mama, 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 forgive, 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 release us, release us. No, no, no. No, no, Daniel approached, he said, I understood by books that this bondage that we're in was we're, meant for 70 years and the time is almost up. So Lord, I'm here to remind you as a watchman. You say you are going to put watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem who will not take uh, rest day or night and keep you in remembrance. So, for I've come to remind you. So Daniel keyed into the timing of God. Can we declare? intercessors for Nigeria all over the world, wherever we are, whether we're in Nigeria or outside Nigeria or in the diaspora, let's declare we're going to key into this season. This is the timing. This is the season. God is up to something concerning Nigeria. God is up in the next few years. We're going to see things unfold that we have never imagined possible because the time is here. Go ahead and declare it. Father, like Daniel, we key into this season for Nigeria. It's a season for things to begin to turn around. It's a season for transformation. It's a season of change. And I sense it so strong in my spirit but we need to key into it in prayer we need to key into it in the in the place of of, of inter intercession and so, Father, we declare even in this hour, we key into the spirit of what you are doing right now concerning Nigeria. Oh, God, we key into this hour. We key into this hour with all intercessors for Nigeria all over the world. Father, we key into it. And we come before you, our Father, in prayer. And we come seeking your face, our God. And we come crying out to you, Lord. And we bless you, Lord. And we magnify you, our Father. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want us to continue from verse, uh, you read to verse 4? So read from verse 5 to 16. From verse okay, from verse 4 to 16. So we're taking the next phase now. Listen, please. Listen to every word. I pray to the Lord my God and confessed. O Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenants and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are in the right, but as you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah and Jerusalem and all Israel, scattered near and far, wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you. O oh Lord, we and our kings, princes, and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. But the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God, for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has disobeyed your instruction and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us because of our sin. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you want. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. Every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come true. Yet we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things, for we did not obey him. O oh Lord our God, you brought lasting honor to your name by rescuing your people from Egypt in a great display of power. But we have sinned and are full of wickedness. In view of all your faithful mercies, Lord, please turn your furious anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. All the neighboring nations mock Jerusalem and your people because of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. 
I want you to notice the very clear approach. Daniel is not pointing any finger of accusation. And remember, Daniel is a righteous guy. If you know the book of Daniel, Daniel was a righteous guy. He was one of the guys that worked in righteousness all the days of his life. I mean, he was just an amazing guy. Yet Daniel never pointed a finger with a same air of arrogance and said, Lord, these are your people that just rebelled. We are trying our best. These useless people, just, just consider them in your mercy. And you know, they're not like us. He took responsibility. And he was praying on behalf of his nation, on behalf of his people. Daniel took full responsibility for the sin of the land. And what are we seeing in Daniel chapter 9? Daniel is spelling out the consequences of a disobedient people. When people are walking in disobedience, it is self-inflicted judgment that comes upon them. And many times they can point to God and blame God, but they don't take responsibility for their disobedience. The price for disobedience, the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you are disobedient, then you will receive judgment. What they have come into was the captivity for them to be in Babylon was because of their disobedience. He said more than once, because we did not heed your prophet's warning. We did not take your counsel. We did not obey your commandments as you gave Moses. Father, we have breached the gap. We have breached the commandment we have broken we are walking into disobedience now that was a pattern for the nation of israel and specifically it was daniel praying for israel but guess what the scriptures are written so that we can apply them to our own situation because the principles still remain the bible says righteousness exalts exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people so when you see a nation going through the kind of challenges nigeria is going through we as righteous people must take responsibility and cry out for righteousness and say father have mercy upon our disobedience reverse your anger from us, oh God, because we realize these things are self-inflicted. It is the price of disobedience, and we cry out for mercy. Can we approach like Daniel without pointing the finger of accusation and, and, and behave as right, uh, holier than thou against this one, against thou? Let's not point any finger. Daniel, as holy as he was, did not point any finger. As favored as he was, he took responsibility, and he cried out to God. Lift your voice and cry out to God, even in this hour. Father God, we know the consequences of disobedience is heavy. The Bible says, Almighty God, that sin is a reproach to any people that righteousness exalts a nation and if a nation is not being exalted that means sin is operating there there is no way to there's no other way around it if this nation is not being raised up in in honor and glory and it is a reproach then there is sin somewhere there is sin cloud uh, covering the nation and we need to cry out against the consequence of disobedience so we can ask, ask for your mercy lord even in this hour as we can see almighty god you are just oh god and you are just in every way you are just in every way in everything that we are facing as a people father you are just in every way that is why we have not come to justify ourselves but we have come to ask for mercy on behalf of nigeria we have come to cry out for mercy on behalf of nigeria in this hour we have come to cry out for mercy almighty god that you show your mercy in every way we ask for your mercy and your grace in every way in Jesus' name. Jasmine, read verse 17 to 19, which is the last three verses. Oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead. For your own sake, Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Stop there. I will just look at that. Oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. One man's prayer, not servants with S, because in this case, Daniel was praying alone. For your own sake, not for my sake, not for our sake, not even for Nigeria's sake, for your name's sake, Lord smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Let's take that verse. We'll take it one, by one verse after the other. Oh, our God. Can we cry out to him? Oh, our God. Hear our plea. We are more than one servant. So you can cry out to him and say, oh, our God. Here, remember the, 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 the prayer we prayed uh, uh, from second, uh, from First Corinthians when we talk about uh, if my second Chron uh, Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my nation humbleness and pray, the same thing here. He said, we hear from heaven. Now we are crying to God. Father God, hear your servant's prayer. Hear our prayer. Can we cry out to him and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Listen as we plead for your own sake, Lord. Uh, smile again on our desolate sanctuary. Can we cry out to God? Lord, smile again upon Nigeria. Can we say, Father, smile again upon Nigeria. Smile okay again upon Nigerians. Almighty God, smile upon us, O oh God. We cry out to you that you smile upon us, O oh God. Smile upon us, O oh God. Take verse 18. Oh, my soul to Oh, my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. Oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open our eyes, your eyes, and see our despair. See how your city and your nation, Nigeria, lies in ruins in terms of state of things, oh God. Father God, we make a plea not because we deserve help, 
Oh God, but because of your mercy, can we let the Lord know that? Father, we make this plea, not because we deserve help as a people, but because of your mercy. Can you tell the Lord? That's the heart of humility. Daniel approached with a sense of humility, not a sense of entitlement. I'm a people of God. We're the people of God. How dare this unbeliever touch us anyhow? How dare they oppress us? No, 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 no. He came with a heart of humility and he says, see our city, Lord. See our land. See our nation. Uh, it bears your name. We bear your name. We honor your name. We carry your name, Lord. Uh, but look at how we are lying in real, so God. Uh, uh, we make this plea, Lord, uh, not because we deserve help, uh, but because of your mercy. Can we declare that? Lord, we make this plea to you, uh, not because we deserve help, uh, but because of your mercy. Lord, we make this plea on behalf of Nigeria, not because we deserve help, uh, but because of your mercy, Lord, uh, but because of your mercy, Lord, uh, but because of your mercy, Lord. Oh, Malema Satele Baba Reba. Ah, Mare Baba Satele Baba. Please take verse 19. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay, O oh my God. For your people and your city, bear your name. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to read it from the message translations. Turn your ears our way, God, and listen. Open your eyes and take a long look at our real city. This city named after you. We know that we don't deserve a hearing from you. Our appeal is to your compassion. This prayer is our last and only hope. Master, listen to us. Master, forgive us. Master, look at us and do something. Master, don't put us off. Your city and your people are named after you. You have a stake in us. That is the message tradition. Lift your voice and cry out to God. Lord, you have a stake in Nigeria. Lord, look upon us. Oh God, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh God, listen and act. Oh God, for your own sake, do not delay. Oh my God, for your people, Nigeria, and for the nation of Nigeria. Oh God, we bear your name. Oh God, hear. Oh God, listen. Oh God, forgive. Look on us and do something. Oh, don't put us off, Lord. Your city and your people are named after you. Ah, for you have a stake in us. Almighty God, you have a stake in Nigeria. We know you have a special place uh, for Nigeria and almighty God, we pray that that prophetic identity of Nigeria is activated. That's what we declare activation of Nigeria's prophetic call and it is to that calling, that God divine assignment upon Nigeria that we appeal to you on behalf, uh, not because we deserve help uh, but because of your mercy, not because we qualified, uh, but because you qualify the call uh, and it's because of that call upon us uh, that we cry upon you and say Lord have mercy. Lord turn away in your anger and look upon us in mercy. Master, listen to us. Forgive us. Master, look upon us uh, and do something. Uh. Don't put us off, Lord. Uh. Oh, God, because Nigeria is named after you, almighty God. You have a stake in us. Uh. You have a stake in us. Uh. You have a stake in our children. You have a stake in our women. Uh. You have a stake in our men. Uh. You have a stake in our nation. You have a stake with all the prophecies you have declared over Nigeria, over the generations, over the years, oh, God. You have a stake in our land. Uh. That's why we cry out that uh, you have mercy upon us, oh God. We appeal to you, oh God. Turn your ears away, God. Listen. Open your eyes and take a long look at us and every room that we are facing right now because we are named after you. You know that we don't deserve, we know we don't deserve a hearing from you. We are not demanding a hearing. We are asking for mercy. We don't deserve a hearing from you. Our appeal is to your compassion, Lord. This is the prayer. This prayer is our last and only hope. Oh, Master, hear. Master, listen. Turn this way and do something. Uh, Master, don't put us off. Uh, Almighty God, you have a stake in us. Let's give God thanks. Uh. For he has turned in favor towards us. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor. He has turned in favor towards us. Father, we give you the praise. Uh, ah, we thank you. The Bible says, uh, the heartfelt prayer of the righteous have been it much. Uh, as we have prevailed in the place of prayer, God honors us. Uh, God honors us. God honors those who honor him. Uh, and even as we have taken our time to take out these 21 days uh, to honor God and seek his face concerning Nigeria and concerning Nigerian, oh, things are going to turn around. Uh, things are going to turn around, not because we deserve help, uh, but because of his mercy. Oh, he has a stake in us. He has a stake in you. And I pray God's blessing upon you. And I pray God's favor upon you. And I pray that the favor of God and the hand of God will be mighty upon you, that his face will be towards you, that God's face will not be turned away from you, but his face will be faced towards you in favor and in goodness. And even in this season, things are going to begin to happen positively for Nigeria. Great things are coming our way, and we are positive. We don't care about the negativity around us. We don't care what we see in the 
media. We don't even care about the challenges we're facing right now because the solution is coming. We can hear the sound of the abundance of rain in the spirit uh, concerning Nigeria. Some are saying bleak and gloom. When they say there's a casting down, we are declaring there's a lifting up. Uh, we take charge uh, and refuse to allow the accuser to prevail in Nigeria. Rather, as intercessors, uh, we declare the prophetic identity of Nigeria is being manifested in every way. We remove the filthy garment. Uh, we remove the grave clothes around Nigeria and Nigerians. Uh, and we put on the garment of honor, the garment of glory upon Nigerians. Uh, and we declare a new identity. And we declare a glorious identity, the real identity of Nigeria in the spirit as God intended. That is what we birth in this season. We birth the real identity of Nigeria. We birth that new Nigeria. We birth the new Nigeria. We reject the old Nigeria and the old identity that the enemy has put upon us. And people have called us names that God did not call us. We reject it. Every name that Nigerians have been called and Nigeria is being called that God didn't call us. Any form of identity that Nigerians have been given or identified with that is not a God-given identity. Go ahead and reject those identities. We reject, we reject every devil-given identity, every man-made identity against Nigeria, every stigma, every stigmatization, every negative identity concerning Nigerians. We reject it. That is not our identity in the spirit. We reject the negative identities and we come, we receive and we demand our true identity in God, our God-given identity in the spirit. We manifest. They may have called us Jacob for many years and Jacob struggled, but one day Jacob, Jacob wrestled with God uh, and they changed his name uh, and his name Jacob was transformed to Israel, which means a prince with God. Uh, we declare today there is a changing of the garment. Uh, there's a changing of identity from the stigma to the honorable name. Uh, we declare a change of identity in Nigeria, a change of identity of Nigeria and Nigerians because God has a stake in us. Uh, we give you the glory, our Father. We give you the honor, oh God, uh, as we see a move uh, of your wind of your, your change, uh, your wind of change is blowing over Nigeria, changing, oh God, institutions, uh, changing all aspects of Nigeria in all her fabric and setting. We see the wind of change blowing. The spirit of God is moving uh, over Nigeria and we can see the spirit moving uh, and bringing change, uh, impossible change, uh, unimaginable, unimaginable change uh, taking place in Nigeria because with God, all things are possible. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the praise uh, for bringing this change. We give you all the honor, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin to round up, I just want to thank everyone for this time together. Before I, I, I close this, uh, the, this session, I want to appeal to anyone who has happened to join this session, but you're not born again, or you need to come back to the kingdom. You were born again, but you've, you left the kingdom, and you just tuned in today and just said, okay, let me see what they have to say about this Nigeria. Is there anything to us still praying again? Well, we are still praying again, because that's how the Spirit has led us. But the truth of the matter is your relationship with God is all important. The Bible starts by saying, if my people are called by my name, you have to be a person of God for you to have an audience with the king of kings. You can't just presume and step into his presence without the right identity. And that identity is being a child of God. How do you become a child of God? Pray this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Change my identity to be a true child of God in every way. I declare right now that I receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, God has changed your identity. And now you can take that scripture. If my people are called by my name, humble themselves and pray. You can now go in as a, people, as a person of God and pray. And God will honor you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank everyone on the various platforms that we have. If you missed any of the sessions, please go back. This is a very important and delicate time. I don't want you to come after a year or two from now and, and uh, when the prophecies are manifesting and things are changing in Nigeria, and then you will wonder, oh, wow, how did it happen? God is using you today to be part of the engineers of the transformation of Nigeria. So don't be caught off guard. Get involved. Be like a Daniel. Not everybody that was in Babylon made a difference. So many people are taken to captivity in Babylon, but not everybody made an impact. But Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood out. May you be outstanding in our generation. May you not be left in the crowd and be quiet out there and just be reacting to situation. May you be part of those God will use in this hour to bring about the transformation we seek and desire over Nigeria. We declare Nigeria's prophetic call is being activated in this hour, and we will see it happen right before our eyes and in our time and in our generation in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in.